Page 48, Jig in A major. Well, you can guess what key it's in. It's in A major. It's got three sharps. And a jig, a really, really, really old dance, like hundreds of years ago dance. Okay. However, the word dance is a kicker here, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, so keep that in mind. It is a dance. 6-8 time, so it, you think, oh no, 16th notes. Well, it's in 6-8 time, so a 16th note gets half a count, or like 8th notes in 4-4 four, four time. So it's 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and you got to count 6. Let's just get the fingering and the rhythms, all, all that first. Right hand here. So it's one and two and three and four and reach up. It's an octave. Two, three. I'm playing everything legato first. And you hold that down forever and then you do that again. Measure six, D sharp. One. Remember the sharp is good for the rest of the measure. So five, six. G, G sharp is in the key signature. One and two and three and the fourth finger on the F sharp. Let's go over to measure nine then. Next page. Come down here. Like sort of like what you had at the beginning, but different notes. Measure 11 again. You see a pattern here? Measure 13. Again, that's a D sharp there. And then measure 15. You, you, okay, okay. Left hand. You're down here. Remember, a dotted quarter note's the same as three eighth notes. Just know that. So in here, it's going to get three counts. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Oh, this is fun. But when we get to measure four, and then they're saying one or five. See the five in parentheses? That's an alternate fingering. It's up to you. You can use thumb and then come up, or you can use five. You come in from five to five. You have a choice. Well, I'll give you another choice. You don't have to do either of those. I can go here, and then I can do two or three, and then here, because I can, I can span all of that without having to do and I think that's safer. Again, that's one of the reasons I like to finger things legato. So can I figure out a fingering that works legato? That usually works well. So here, I'm going to use third finger, because it's easier for me to reach here from third finger than second finger. That's a stretch. It's which way you want to stretch. Third, and then you can come down. No, you don't have to do that either. Because first off, there's staccatos, but I, I mean it's nice to do this. But I want to go from here, here, here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a three or a two for that E, just to get me a little closer to it. I don't want to go from here to here. I want to get closer to it. If I use a three or two, I am closer. I get my hand closer to that note. I don't care if it's three or two. Pick one. I use three going up. I could use three going down. Whatever. And then you're doing that some more. Now measure six. They're saying four, two, and now you have a, a again. A, you can do the one, 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 or you can do a five. Or do this. Four, three, reach up, third finger, two, one. I get them all in one hand position. Now if you have really small hands, I don't know if you can stretch that. Hopefully you can. That might be a stretch. Another way you can might do two and then slide off. That's another possibility because we do slide off sometimes. You have to be real careful to time the slide just right so it, to play the next note correct. We have to do that sometimes. I'll leave that up to you. But I'm going to do a four, three, two, one. And then the last measure of the page on page 48. This is measure eight. You're here. If you repeat, Back at the top, you gotta come down here. 
So you're using five. If you go on, you're using the same note again with thumb. So I suggest if you're going to repeat, and you should repeat, you know, I should say when you repeat, finger it the same way you fingered it in measure four. Two or three, and then now you're ready to go back. So that way. But if you go on, five is fine because then with the next one, a measure nine, you just use the thumb. And we do that a lot. That's no big deal. Really, it's no big deal. Trust me, it's no big deal. Then on measure 14, you have the same thing. No. Finger it like you did before. Use two or three here. I don't really see anything else that's particularly tricky for the left hand. Now put the hands together here. Again, play everything connected. One and two. Measure nine, you're here. And you're wondering why is there a natural sign in front of that D? And the answer is because somewhere before this they had a D sharp. It may have been a ways away before, ways before, well, but nevertheless they had a D sharp earlier and they're just letting you know this really is a D natural here. Is my impression. There may be some other reason they're giving you that courtesy sign. I don't know what it is. And they really don't need it because the last D sharp was a long time ago. So it's a D natural anyway. So it's here. Now that, on measure 12, they have to give you natural in front of the G because. The sharp is in the key signature. It would be a G. So they have to do that. You hear a sequence going up, a pattern going up. And then, and then for measure 15, we got the same thing going on in the left hand. Because you got to move the right hand down here and tricky when you're moving the hands to the same but and this is like it was at the beginning here we can get the hands working together then go back and work on and get rid of any hesitations you may have you can go as slow as you need to go I go a little fast because it shortens the video that way you don't have to be bored for quite so long but you go however slow you gotta have go but try and Keep that a steady beat. So if you're hesitating somewhere, work on that and get rid of it. And once you have that, we can go back and add the articulation, the slurs and the staccatos, and both hands have them, and they're different. So good luck with this. These notes in the left hand to start with, let's just connect them. That's fine. Lift up before and after these slurs. That's a staccato. Short staccatos. Now, I don't agree with this on measure three and four. The slurs, I would prefer to just connect the C sharp to the B. I, I don't know this piece well enough, and actually back when this thing was written, they didn't put in slurs and staccatos. You were just expected to know it. And you'd get it up to speed, and you'd just start feeling it. And if you felt a slur or a staccato, you'd put it in. And that's, you know, they, they, musicians back then learned as part of their training how to interpret things. We don't do it, but, but I don't know about this. I found a lot of the slurs in the Faber books fit a violin player a lot better than they fit a piano player because the slurs for the different instruments mean different things. And so a slur for a violin doesn't mean the same as a slur for a piano. Mm -mm. Uh, so I'm wondering if maybe... I mean, if you want to separate them, fine, separate them out. 
that's the stuff. And both hands come up here because it's a, a new phrase in the right hand. So forth. So put in all the slurs and staccatos and all that. And at the end, bottom of page 49 in the second ending, they put in a trill in the right hand. Don't know why they want to end it on a trill, but they do. So I'm recommending you're going to trill. Remember a trill is the note given and the next note up in the scale, whatever the scale is. In A, the next note up is a B. So we're going to trill those two notes. And they want one and three, okay. You have to find, depending on how, it doesn't have to be a real super duper fast trill. It just needs to be controlled and even. Sixteenth notes are fine. But I strongly recommend that you start on the upper note here on this trill. Here. And you just one, two. And it's, basically it's six beats. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you just hang on to that last one the last A. You want to end on an A. But it, you don't necessarily have to hang on to it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's it. I think it sounds better if you'd hang on to it, but they didn't do that. So it's here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they both hands come up together. If you can trill faster than that, like 30 second notes or whatever. Four beats, or four notes per beat. One, two, one e and a, two e and a, one e and a. whatever. Now the fingering they're showing for one and three, that's to the two notes involved. One on the bottom note, three on the top. Doesn't mean that's how you start it. Well the one came first so I have to start with an A. No, they're just telling you the fingers to use on each of the notes. That doesn't say anything about how to play it. When we do the play with me I'm just going to do them as sixteenth notes. Then we can add some dynamics. Again, Back when this was written, they didn't put dynamics in the music. It was up to you. What, what did you think? And here, it can be pretty much both hands here, but for the most part, it's the right hand. Loud, whatever you think loud is. Not super loud, just loud. And you, they're saying stay loud until you get to measure 9 at the top of page 49. Is it soft? That's both hands. However, you're going to repeat page 48. And when you repeat things, don't play it exactly the same twice. Change. You can change the staccatos and slurs. You can change the dy not dynamics. Maybe when you repeat, you play. Start it soft here. Measure five, go back up to loud. You want to end it loud, so let's go back up. Because at measure nine, now we're soft. All of a sudden, you're soft. And then on measure 11, you get a crescendo, and you're going to go up to loud, but you're going to take four measures to get there because you don't get a loud until measure 15. So um, I suggest we do it maybe like a measure or so at a time here. So it's, we're starting out measure 11 soft, stay there. Come up just a hair. A little more moderately soft. Now moderately loud. Now you're loud. soft again. You do that again. Although don't play it exactly the same the second time. Change something. Find something to change. The articulation, the slurs and staccatos, or the dynamics. Change that a little bit or something. And at the bottom on measure 17 they have a second time writ. Which means the second time you play it, after you repeat, you retard on or you slow down. So second time in measure 17. Something like that. 
If you don't like the trill, don't play it. Play is just regular note. Trills are optional. Right. And typically when we would do trills back in this type of music, we would end it with a turn, what's known as a turn. So you'd, you'd play the next note under at the end of it. I can't, it, it just turn, it ends the trill. And that was kind of standard. Most all trills back then did that. So it would be like on the last beat, six and, you'd do that trill. Play that on beat six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like so. If you want to do that, fine. Otherwise, just don't play a trill. Just hold it out. That's fine. Speed-wise, Grazioso is, I think, a, more of a, a fun thing. It's got a gracious dance. A fun thing. That's a... The kicker, though, it's a dance. And that's the key. Dances and marches and pieces where people are moving, processions, where the people are actually moving to the music, it's very important to keep a steady speed. Now they're slowing down at the end, I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but okay, we can slow down at the end, maybe that's to tell the dancers, by the way, it's over now. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, no hesitations, and it's very important that this be a uh, steady speed, at whatever your speed is. <laughs> to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do any dynamics. Uh, I'll give us six counts and we are going to do the repeats. One, two, three, four, ready and go and one and two.
repeat. 